Bonjour, hi, welcome to the stream. I'm Frank Boucher, cloud advocate, and today with me another cloud advocate. You know her maybe because it's their second apparition on this channel. I have with me April. April, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, everyone. <laughs> I am doing okay. <laughs> Trying to wake up my device here. <laughs> Half Robocop. Robo. Ro yes. I do feel like a RoboCop, actually. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> Let's see. I think it went to sleep. It needs to be and then working. I think it might so... turn off. Yeah. Yeah. One second for that. But... I'm very excited by today. Uh, today's topic. It will be fun. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's not a problem. So uh, in the chat, let's let us know if you saw the first episode of uh, April with us. Uh, it it was last week, right? Damn. Yeah, it was last week. Yes, it was last week. Wednesday what? last week. No, Tuesday last week. Hey, Shirley Dev. Oh, Robo Vogue. I love that. Hi, Charlie Dove. I haven't talked to you in a while. Okay, it's coming back on. It's getting, it's getting back. Yeah, it took a little nap. You know, technology likes to take naps of when course. you need it most, right? <laughs> it's totally fine. I will be yeah. patient because I really want it to work later. So. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <That makes sense. laughs> me too. Doing? Hey, Mana Sumia. First time. Well, welcome. Oh, welcome. welcome. Super happy to have you. It's a very special day today because we're mixing cooking, reality, and Azure. How can you imagine that? Even if I try really, really hard, I, will, I wouldn't have think about that. Mixing those things. But it's working. That's all. That's it. This this is how you can see that April. She's a genius. But apparently, she's also having tech issue. I was working a few minutes ago. It's restarting now. That's fine. <laughs> nice to be here. I'm happy you are. It will be fun today. So I don't know. Um, so for those who didn't see last time uh, show with April, we did. Uh, she 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 shot. Blah, 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 sorry, that's my English. It's Monday. Monday is always difficult for me in English. I'm kind of rusty. <laughs> so. On the last stream, what uh, April was showing us is she built a game to learn French. Uh, she wanted to learn French, so she built a game in augmented reality where the game display cards in front of her and then she need to press a button to and then say if it's showing like the word dog, she need to say it in, in French, so it's chien, and then if she pronounce it correctly, the card will turn green. And she has it also the other way around, so she read the word in French, and then she must say it in English and like to make sure she understand both. So it was very very interesting, and she's using Azure Cognitive Services with that and a few services. It was pretty cool. So she shared all the links. Um, yeah. So if you follow her on Twitter or follow me on Twitter, when I will put uh, the video on YouTube right now, I'm I'm battling make sure i have the good name and i'm respecting all the rules to put content online but uh soon i promise we'll put that online and you will be able to uh to read more about that yes and third time's a charm i'm restarting it again let's see wow we have plenty of a uh, new person today that's awesome yeah welcome aboard do that do i love the name do that do Sounds like Give a, me a quick second, Frank. Give me one second. Yeah. And that's how you know it's live because now I need to make times and tell stories and stuff. And she cannot even hear me right now. 
guess she removed her headset. Maybe she does. So uh, tomorrow, let's let's just chat uh, a little bit. So tomorrow, another uh, part two. Tomorrow, tomorrow is uh, Laurent Bignon is uh, joining back again. Uh, he will will continuing. In his case, we're continuing to build a notification application that he built. Last time, we spent a lot of time making sure that the the application was working on Android because he's doing the application in Xamarin. So tomorrow we continue to push the infrastructure, setting a hub, and then the notification hub will send the message to all different devices. So it will be very, very cool too. Tell us a joke in Quebecois. Hmm, our Quebecois song. Ah, do you guys code in, in this channel? Yes, 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 we do code. It's just that right now, uh, April is having uh, some technical issue and we will need yeah. her to have her setup working. So that's why we're chit chatting. But yes, like it's heavy uh, on the uh, moment things. Unfortunately, I don't think I'll be able to show it in the device. I'll have to do it the unfun way and show it in the Unity editor because okay. every time I turn the device on and off, it's not fully turning on. So I'll just show it in Unity Editor instead. Okay. One second, because I just took a piece off. It's One live. second, thanks. It's live. Jimmy. The show must go on, so we'll do what we can. I'm just sad for you. Hello, Ness. Yeah, probably. I never play with those things myself, but uh, <laughs> yes, this, this, the chair has bunny hair. Bunny ears, sorry. Yeah. I know someone who must be really upset right now. I can show you one thing. Okay, so. I bought this thing earlier today. I'm not sure, is it showing up correctly? This way? Just, uh, it does a bunch of, uh, if I press, I can change channel. And it show a uh, gift and stuff like that, pixel art kind of thing. Oh, that one is, is sad, it's a gun, but uh, come on, switch. There's a few, uh, and you can control it with your phone. Okay. It's funny. Let's, let's do this while it works. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let I should share your screen right away. Uh, one second. Let me make sure I'm logged in. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Yeah, the people are wondering a little if uh, they're getting tired of listening to me. <laughs> Aw. Almost there, almost there. I just need to pull up the page I need you to see. Hey, Michael, and how are you? Okay. Uh, Surely they have for, for the little frame. Uh, you use the app and you could pre-select a bunch of um, animated GIF or image that you want in. There's some alarm. There's a bunch of stuff. It's called uh, Pixel, Pixo, I think. Uh, there's a few um, different variation of that. There's one model that is a, a speaker too. Okay, let's go. I will change scenes. And I'm ready whenever you are. Oh yeah, I'm just waiting. I was uh, making time. So we're now transported in April's house. Yay, welcome to my crib. All right, so it seems to be everything is working. So ignore the dog in the background barking. So the app that I created that I'm showing this week is a, um, a recipe book, if you will, recipe app that you can use while you're cooking. I made everything of a larger scale just so that way um, you can 
see everything, but essentially if you're using it in real life, it would be smaller. It'll start off with recipes that you can select. So for this one, I did one for cookies. And as you can see what it looks like, there's some buttons here on the left that has some functionality that we'll get into in a second. In the middle though, I have the ingredients list for my chocolate chip cookies. And so first I have um, the prep time, cook time, I have all the ingredients that are here as well. And then what, as what you can see here, I can actually click these. They're check boxes. So if I'm cooking and I'm walking around my kitchen trying to make sure I grabbed everything, I can say, oh, I just grabbed two large eggs. Let me check that off. And okay, I got the vanilla extract, so on and so forth. I can also view um, instructions and that will take me to the uh, instructions that I have here as well. One cool thing with this particular uh, app, the way that it's been built, is that what you're seeing in front of you, this text is scrollable. So depending on where your eyes are, it'll actually scroll up and down. No. So, really? Yeah, it should. Yep, it's done it right now, actually. As soon as I move my head and then I move it. Let's see if we can do it again. You see that? Yeah. Yeah. So now I don't even have to scroll. And so we're using eye tracking for that. I do have a bit of a bug on this because right now the text is like going to the sky, as you can see. <laughs> but um, essentially it works both directions. So I can scroll back down. It says Star well. Wars themes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? So it's that's a feature. It's not cool. a bug. It's a feature. It's just like it's the Star exactly. Wars theme. Exactly. Um, I also have some voice activation in here. I have a feeling that my mic permission was not set because when I say I see timer yeah it's not set so let me exit out of this and then come back into it and if she asked me for permission to use my mic um this is so i noticed cool. that let's see oh i hope it lets me do it because the voice is the important part of this this is so cool okay so it didn't do no, it i that really time. really really want a, a no low lens um, okay, so we'll see if voice works in a second. Let me see. Timer. Nope. All right, so somewhere my mic settings aren't turned on right now. But essentially, I have everything set up to take regular uh, voice commands in English. And that's something that's native with MRTK if you're using the Windows Universal uh, platform or Universal Windows platform. But the way I tied Azure into this is that I can also do voice commands in a chosen language. So in my case, that language is Spanish. So if you've probably seen to the side, I have some like Spanish phrases and I have a button over here that I can click to say something in Spanish. That's just so I can make sure I'm saying the right words. The most important, <laughs> I can also see what it comes out as. And so we'll see if that works in a second since my mic, um, I don't think my mic permissions have been granted. But in any case, um, if I do quick timer, um, I have a timer that pops up over here. Now, in theory, you would want to select whatever that time might be. I have it um, hard coded right now to be at 90. So um, I can start it and did it start? Uh oh, it's not liking me right now. I promised you it was working earlier and we can take a look at it in a second over in Unity. But I have a feeling right now if I try out this Spanish thing, it might not. It might not let me do it. Let me see. Let's see. Instructiones. Oh, it does. Okay, yeah, it works. So as you can see, I said instructions in Spanish and it switched to the instruction screen. Let me try again and say ingredients. Ingredientes. Oh, I didn't say it right. Ingredientes. ingredients there we go so now it's switched back um if i wanted to uh let me see if i wanted to go back to the recipe book i would then say libro de recetas Oops, I said libro. libro de recetas does it do it nope also, this is why I have this here to debug with regards to how my pronunciation is, because Spanish is not my first language. It's my second, actually. Libro de recetas. Ah, I hate everything I said. 
Libro de Receta. There we go. And so it can pop up here. Um, and I also did the same thing with using Spanish as, as well as here to do different controls. Now, essentially, what would be even more cool is if you didn't have to press some button off in the distance. And with Mixed Rally Toolkit, we have what are called solvers. And um, there are ways that you can attach objects to follow um, whatever the designated target is. So for example, um, I could use a solver to have this little mic button pop up whenever I show my hand. So as you can see right now, probably, do you see kind of like holographic looking hands, Frank? Oh yeah, and it, <laughs> since the beginning, yeah. I, I thought it's really awesome. So what's really cool about this, you can kind of see there's little joints in here. You can attach um, a solver to any of these joints and that way I can attach a mic to any of these. I, if I wanted to attach it, for example, to like my wrist even, I could put one there and then just tap my wrist and that'll turn on the mic so I can say whatever in Spanish. So that's what the uh, app is. I am now going to turn this one off and we'll go see how to build this yeah. over in uh, Unity. Wonderful. It is right. awesome, April. I, I didn't thought you will be as advanced on, on, on that app. Uh, yeah, I didn't think so either, so that makes two of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to be fair, because people don't know, but how long have you been working? Okay, I will wait. Say so, that one more time. <laughs> yeah, I, I just paused. I realized you did not have your headset. So just to make everybody knows, how long have you been working? Like how long did to arrive to that prototype? How long have, like how many hours or how many days or week or what? Like? Yeah. So uh, for this, I would say it took me two days to make this. Um, two days being that I was really starting from scratch. So it was a matter of figuring out what the heck I wanted to do and then trying to figure out how things work in Unity. Um, but last night, I literally rebuilt all of it and I got it done like super fast. So at that point, you already know what needs to happen where. So uh, that made a big difference. Let me just turn my ring light back around. But, you know, these experiences, the ones that I typically share, they don't take a lot of custom code. Yes, we'll do some coding while we're here today, but um, a lot of it is using what we have with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. And so, um, Frank, if you can share my screen. Yeah, so yeah, I can yeah. share the Since toolkit. you are talking, I put you a little bit bigger. But, oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> it's like we could see you. Yeah, no, no, like I was asking because a bunch of people were asking, hey, are we coding? Like, you know, what is it? And like, oh, it looked more advanced. And uh, I know oh, you like to make application <laughs> that are easy to get in, right? <laughs> yeah, um, I laugh about that um, as, as it not being really advanced because I personally like to create content for beginners. So that way for those who are starting out, they can build these, uh, these different experiences that might look really advanced on the outside. But once you start working on it, you, you come to realize that um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's more approachable as opposed to some of the more advanced things that we could be building. Now, with that said, because I myself, I started working with this last summer, this being this entire space and of like extended reality and spatial computing. And so I have come to fall in love with using the Mixed Reality Toolkit. And that's what you see here on the screen. Now, the Mixed Reality Toolkit, um, it, it is designed to help you really speed up your development process if you're creating um, anything with uh, virtual reality and augmented reality. And so I would highly suggest that um, if you're interested in learning more about this, and this is what we'll be using while we're creating this, check this out. Frank, if you could share the getting started with MRTK link in the chat, so that, that way the folks at home will Which have one? access Sorry? to this. It's getting started with MRTK. Should be the first one in my list of links. Uh, H HL 2K tutorial, getting started. Just, uh, getting started with MRTK. It should be a Microsoft.github.io link. I will find it. Where is it? Why well, I don't see it? No worries. Um, worst case scenario, if you're trying to find this page, oh, yeah, you can okay, I have it. Okay, perfect. Sorry, yeah. Sorry, I'm just so, just slow. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> 
So that particular link will land you where I am right now. And this is uh, instructions on how to get started with MRTK. Highly suggest taking a look at this if you're brand new to working with the Mixed Reality Toolkit. This is what we'll be using. And um, as you're getting started with this, the instructions here will walk you through how to import that into your project. About how much experience do you need to create what we're doing today? You need some familiarity with Unity with regards to understanding um, what the different windows are and um, how to do different things in the inspector, for example. But the documentation we're sharing also has that very thorough walkthrough as well. So as so long as you can follow the instructions and match the picture to what you're seeing in Unity, you'll be able to do this as well. Um, one more thing before I head into Unity, I'm spending some time tomorrow actually placing these projects into a GitHub repo. So that way, if you want to try these out on your own, build on top of them, do whatever you want, feel free. I personally create these projects for you all. So that way you can take them and run wild with them and build whatever. Um, this was the third mixed reality project that I've had that I've created, but um, I'll share more of that on Twitter once that's available. So. Let's head over into Unity since I keep talking about it. So I have uh, my scene here. It's nice and blank. And if you're wondering for this one, I'm using Unity 2019.3.14 F1 uh, for my version of Unity. Now, when you're using the Mixed Reality Toolkit, but more important, when you're doing development for Windows Mixed Reality, you do need to set up your computer for that. And so, um, I'm not going to do all the steps here, but just to walk through just briefly where those areas are. In file, you'll need to switch to the Universal Windows platform. Very important. Once you've done that change in player settings, you'll need to add in the Windows Mixed Reality um, within the Virtual Reality SDKs. There are some settings that need to be adjusted in there, and I can share documentation on where that information is. Once you've done that, um, beyond that, You'll head over into window for text mesh pro and you'll import that and then you'll also import the mixed reality toolkit into your project you'll do that by going to assets import new sorry import package custom package and then wherever you download the mixed reality toolkit and so if that sounds like a mouthful don't worry because there is a link that'll walk you through how to do all that and frank if you could share the HL2 import MRTK link. It's aka.ms slash. Yep, oh, oh, perfect. So this link will take you to the page that I'm on. Um, I think it's the one that I'm on right now. And if you go to page like two while you're on here, it'll walk you through every single step I just zoomed through in Unity. And I prefer looking at the docs when I was getting started because it's really step by step instructions there. So that's how you can set your projects up. Now, with regard to Mixed Reality Toolkit, once that's been imported, you're going to add that to your scene and configure. And then that's when you're going to get um, these two new objects that are created over here. One's the Mixed Reality Toolkit. The other one is the Mixed Reality Play Space. Your camera, if you're wondering where that went, is inside of, I believe, the Mixed Reality Play Space. Um, it goes into there. And then the Mixed Reality Toolkit itself is the Mixed Reality Toolkit. So when I created this app, I um, knew I wanted to add in that eye tracking that I showed you, which I think is super cool. I know the first time I tried out a HoloLens, um, that was one of the things that I actually tried out for the first time was, uh, I'll, I'll use a HoloLens too, was seeing the text scroll. And so we actually have, um, a example scene where you can go check that out if you want to try it out on a device. And that's part of the Mixed Reality Toolkit if you import the examples package. I'm not going to import that because I already have it imported. But what, the reason why I bring that up is because these example packages already have um, uh, fully built out versions of probably what you want to build. And so when I personally want to build something and I don't want to start 100% from scratch, I like to go to um, to the examples, and in this case, it's going to be the eye tracking one. And in scenes, we actually have a navigation one, which is what you saw. So rather than, again, rather than me reinvent the wheel, I go find that object that has what I needed. And I know this one is the eye-based scroll. 
And so if I come up, it's going to be this one that's right here. And I personally take this, take this, uh, this game object, copy that from there. And then I would head back over to my actual scene, which I've made earlier for you all. And then here I would just right click and paste. And now I have it. So I don't have to start from scratch with that. That part is literally copy and paste. Uh, that's one thing, smart. Yeah, that part is like nice and fun. Um, what uh, one thing I need to make sure we do is make sure we have the right configuration profile. That just makes sure that we have a really good experience when we are using this on device, and it'll also change my background. Now, because I have that example package already imported into this project, I'm actually also going to get all the other all the other configuration profiles that have been set. Um, I'm going to use the eye tracking one because now I don't have to go in and modify all the different profiles because it's already set up the way it needs to be. As you can probably see, my screen down here has turned black and um, that coincides with the HoloLens 2 configuration. So that was the other thing. Now back to this uh, scrolling thing. What we need to do, let me close Teams. Oh, I guess I thought it was closed. It might not be closed. All right. So what we need to do from here, actually, Frank, give me one second. Let me put teams on do not disturb. Can we take away my screen share for a second? Yep. Thank you. Okay, you're safe now. Thank you, thank you. And let me just, there we go. All right, cool. Okay, you can bring me back now. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hate it. I still don't have any icons. I have a stream deck, like I have a mm -hmm. bunch of buttons, but I didn't put images, so I need to read the text and make sure I push uh, the good uh, one. Yeah. Oh, I also realized my head was blocking notifications, so that's perfect too. All right. So, <laughs> all right, cool. So now that we have this in here, um, from a setup perspective, what I had were two different, um, what Unity calls them quads, if you will. And on these quads, I have text, and then I had that whole checkbox effect for the ingredients. And so when we create those, I'm going to first and foremost, reset where this is located, because I like to keep things centered. So I'm just gonna reset that. And then I'm gonna bring it to 0.8, so that way uh, I can see it clearly in front of me. And then, once I open up the eye base scroll area here, I have title and subtitle. Oh, let me actually show them on the same. There we are. So I have title and subtitle. We're not gonna need these, so we can delete those. And now what we're left with is going to be the scrolling thing here. So what I suggest doing is first and foremost, making use of what's already there. And this one already has a text um, object. So what I've done is just duplicate it, line it back up this way if I need to, and then you can move that down and around to wherever it needs to be. So we'll just do a very, um, very light example here. Let's say this one said cookies. And so we change the text there to say cookies. Here we can edit that text in the Unity Editor so that way we don't have to open up um, any code to do that, which I really personally like. Then down here where we have the additional text, let's say I wanted that to say prep time, uh, 20 minutes, so that's good. Heading back to that cookies one, that's a little small, so let's make it big. Let's say it's, it's two, uh, to a size two. We can bring that over so now it's centered. That prep time one, we need a cook time, so we can duplicate that. And you can do that, I'm using a shortcut control D and what you'll need to do for there is just change the text mesh property to cook uh, cookie time, <laughs> cook time, make that 15 minutes and we can slide that over. So already that quick Frank, what we just did was recreate essentially that interface that we had in the beginning for where the ingredients was. And yet I haven't opened any code editor to do any of it. I did all that in the unity editor. Now, just below that, we have this canvas object where it has the scroll view. Here in the viewport, and the text mesh pro text is where you have this text that's in there. Now for what I'm making, I don't need that text because for the ingredients list, it's just a list of ingredients and we don't need to scroll that. So um, I actually 
remove this completely because there's no need for it. But to make my life easier, because my instructions page uses the same setup, I want to duplicate this particular object and I'm going to just call this one instructions. And I'm going to turn it off so that way it's hidden. I did that so that way I don't have to redo everything all over again when we get to the next part. But opening this back up, since I don't need that text um, at all, really, I don't need any of this actually. So where it says canvas down, I can delete that and now it's blank. Now that checkbox effect that you saw earlier, they're buttons within MRTK. And so you can find those, um, they're going to be in the uh, SDK UX interactable prefab folder. And there's a list of buttons to choose from. What we want is going to be for the checkbox. And let's see if I can find it. I think it's the first one there. Drag that up into the scene and now it's there. I'm gonna make sure we can see it by putting it at a point eight. And so here it is, is that checkbox. Now, if you recall, I had a couple of them. And so what's great here is that I can duplicate this again. Let's just add four ingredients using control Z. We duplicated that four times. And so rather than me have to space this out and making sure that it's like perfectly spaced out, what I'm going to do instead is use what's called a grid object collection in the Trali toolkit. I'll show you what that does in a second. I'm going to create an empty object. Let's just call this ingredients. And I'm going to reset this so it's at a decent position. And all these checkboxes that we just made, I'm going to make them children of this ingredient. And then here in ingredients, we're going to add a component that's going to be the grid object collection. What that's going to do is place these checkboxes on a grid. So right now we have four of them. We'll need to update this so that way um, they, they align vertically in a um, vertically in a row. So there's only four, so we'll say it has four rows. This is where it gets a little tricky is the width and the height because uh, you might play around with this until you get exactly what you want. I want to start with point two and click update collection. You had a question? Yeah, I have a question. Um, could you, like right now, like, like we are putting all those manually, like for a prototype, it's good, but like, could we add that a little bit more by programmation? I'm assuming, yes, we could create those. For these parts, um, you could, uh, but what's really great about Unity and working with the Mixed Reality Toolkit is that it does minimize that need to do a lot of custom um, code, which I think is really helpful. So like, even right now, what I'm doing with this grid object collection, that's a script in itself. It's just that I didn't have to create the script because with MRTK, it was provided for you. And so now from there, you can work within the editor to do things. When we start with the uh, the speech component, which we'll get to in a second, that's when you'll do more things with um, with uh, adding stuff with code. Okay. But over in Mixed Reality Toolkit, if not there. It was more but, like, let's say I want to add more recipe. Like, let's say I want to add uh, chocolate. Oh, like that. So like, like yeah. I could add like a, maybe in a database or a specific format, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, so yeah. it's sucked in the application and like show the proper list of check bar. Like assuming like it's possible. Possible. Yeah. Could, yeah. Possible. Can I do it? Probably not. <laughs> not in two days. <laughs> not in two days. That's totally fine. Like, yeah, we all do that, yeah. right? When you prototype, but, yeah. prototype, you focus on different mm -hmm. specs. So of course, some stuff are all yeah. coded. But just curious because I, I don't know Unity, right? Yeah. yeah, from a scaling perspective, I think that would be more efficient if you are playing from a database and making sure that everything sets appropriately. Because if you were to do this manually for like however many recipes, that's a lot of of clicking and dragging and so on and so forth. Which for me, that's why I think that could work because. Um, what you're seeing right now for the ingredients list, it's really just like the template that I created. And then from there, you just add your ingredients. So I think if you have the template already made using code in some way, like using a script in some way, you probably could pull that in and adjust as necessary. Yeah. Um, I, but, you know, I say great. database, it could be a, like a JSON yeah. file or something. Like. Yeah, I think it's possible. Um, I would be interested to see if I could do that though. Um, for this one though, 
using the active script that we have here, at least for the grid object collection, when I click update collection, I should see all four of the boxes now. So um, I'm just gonna adjust this till they seem to be about right. Let's do this one more time. There we go. And I see that Corey's in the chat. So hi, Corey, how are you? Happy to have glanced over and I saw your name in there. Um, all right, so with these check boxes, you can add the text to them, open them up, button content, there should be a label. And here, let's say there was something that said egg. Let's say the next one said uh, milk. Also, Shirley Dev was asking a question and I totally missed it. So sorry about yeah. that, Shirley Dev. I uh, was asking, uh, would you add an application windows in a view such as Notepad or Calculator? And uh, while you're in the mixed reality, when you're in the HoloLens? I'm assuming. Or just like in general? Um, so you could have um, multiple, uh, multiple things open. I've actually also seen demos where folks have had, um, have had, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, have had multiple things open at one time. And it's just a matter of uh, assuming that you have the app for it on the device and you could do that. Like I could have opened up a browser, for example, while I was in the recipe app and browse the internet if I wanted to. So um, I don't have a lot of apps on my HoloLens, just primarily um, because I like to keep it as free as I can. But as long as you have the app on there, you can access the Windows Store as well on HoloLens. And so if there's an app in there you want to download, like OneNote, for example, then uh, soon you downloaded it and it's on there, you can pop it up and you'll be able to see it as well. All right, so this is our ingredients list. We made that um, relatively quickly. And so if I go into play mode really quick, what you should be able to see is when I bring my hands up, we can tick these on and off. So Here's my hand. I can click that I have eggs, click that I have milk, click that I have sugars, I have a typo there, and flour. So that's good, that's created. I'm going to fix that typo in sugar because it could just say sugar, not sugars. And the next thing we'll add in is the instructions. And then after the instructions, we'll just get into some coding. There we go. And let's just save this because it's a sad day when you don't save and everything closes on you. So. <laughs> yep. Yep. So we got ingredients out the way. And now uh, let's move that to this so that way everything's grouped together. I like things to be organized. And now let's do something with these instructions. Let's bring those back. Oops, bring those back. I think I turned off the wrong thing. Come on, here we go. So I'm not going to change anything in here, but I will show you that if you want to adjust this text that's in here, um, because I'm using what was already created from the example of that comes with Mixed Reality Toolkit, that text area is going to be down here in scroll view in the viewport. And then where it says text mesh pro text, this is all that text that's there. So this is where you can, in my case, insert the uh, recipe. So right now we have two different things that pop up. One, we have ingredients. The second, we have um, the instructions. And as you saw on the demo, you can navigate to them using buttons. So I uh, briefly lied. I'm going to do one more thing before we get into the code, and that's adding these buttons because the buttons is what we'll um, need to add the code to as well so we can use some speech. So. Fortunately, with MRTK, we already have buttons. I'm going to drag in this uh, this one that's already a vertical bar. I think I only used, I used the wrong one. There should be one that has four buttons on it. Yep, there we go. And then I'm going to reset it so it's at the right place. I was clicking the wrong button. All right, so. There's that, I want to scale this up to a five, I think I did for the last one. So now that's pretty big. I have aging eyes, so I need to, I need things to be bigger. 
Um, all right, so there were four buttons in general, and you can edit them in here. We have pressable buttons. It's going to be that button icon in text, in this text mesh pro. The first one says ingredients. What's awesome is that we have icons um, in here for you to change your uh, your buttons. So where did it go? I think I lost where the button icon thing is. It should be in here. Oh, here it is. Oh, maybe it's not. We can get to that later. But most important, what we need to do here is at least change the text that's in here. Oh, wait, there it is. So where are you? Ah, OK. So here's where you can change those buttons. Um, for ingredients, I did a checkbox because we're checking boxes in there. You can use your own icon. I, for the sake of prototyping, I use what comes with MRTK. Um, but let's go ahead and update all these. So this one will say instructions. This one will say timer. And the final one will say recipe book. And that'll take you back to like the recipe book page that we haven't created, but it would be the page that has all your recipes if this was an actual um, recipe book. So we have the buttons, we have the instructions, and now we are getting into some code. So the very first thing that I want to create is the ability for us to switch between these things. So let's create a new script. And I have a script folder that's already created, but we'll create some new ones in here just for the screen, for the stream. So you go to create C sharp. We're going to call this one switch and then recipe um, and recipe pages only because I don't want to mess up the ones I had before. And so while that compiles, uh, we'll open this up in Visual Studio and then we will go ahead and create a script so that way we can switch between ingredients versus instructions. So that's the first thing. And this one, promise you, it is a very short script. Um, it does not take a lot, which is lovely. When you create scripts in Unity, if you're brand new to this, they do give you um, this template, if you will, um, to, to start with. It has to do things at the top, and then there are there is a start method uh, as well as an update. The start is what's called when the scene first loads, and then update is what's called every single frame. So if you want an action to happen every frame, that would go in update. If you want something to happen at start, then that would go in start. You don't have to keep these. And as an example, we're actually going to get rid of them for this script because we don't need them. What we're going to do is create two methods. Um, one that opens the ingredients, um, that ingredients panel, and then one that opens the instructions panel. So to start, what we need to do to, to is start, you know what I will ask, right? Go ahead and ask. Because because I have my glasses, but I, I still can. Yes, you want to zoom in. <laughs> yeah, let's let's do that. Let's see. Let me know. Is this good? Yeah, it's good. Oh, well, that's that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, keep it. Like if it's too big, that uh, like everything is scrolled, you, you could zoom out a little bit. But like it's, you know, that way I'm sure everybody can follow. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Thank you for reminding me. I was the one that was just talking about my aging eyes. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to create two public game objects. The reason being is that we want to be able to assign objects that are already in Unity to these fields, so that way we can ensure that um, this is what's being referenced. So in Visual Studio, we'll start with public game object. We'll call this one ingredient page, make it make sense. The next one that we'll do is going to be called public game object, and we'll call this one instructions page. And those are our two public objects. Now, from here, we'll create the first method. This one's going to be to open that ingredients panel. So we'll do a public void. We're going to call it open ingredients. And here we are. And then inside that, the logic that we want to have is that if for the ingredients page, essentially, we want to make sure that the instruction page is hidden. So therefore, when we have the ingredients page method called, ingredients should be open and instructions should be um, closed. But in Unity terms, that means that ingredients page should be set to active. And then um, for the instructions page, that set to active value is going to be false. And so what that looks like in code is 
ingredients page dot set active to true and then instructions page set active is going to be false so you gotta love boolean values and right below that we're going to do the inverse for the instructions and so i need to make sure i close that and then down here we'll do uh open instructions and sorry oh i knew i was missing something i was like why is it squiggly parentheses. all right yeah yeah it was tricky parentheses so for this one we'll do the inverse as i said above um this one the instructions page set active will be true and then the ingredient page set active will be false I think and you're the only person I know who type like, everything again. I would have copy yeah. pasted and just change the name and like move things around. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm gotta too type lazy, it out, I right? <laughs> I will say for someone who like just learned C sharp late last year, this has been like the best way for me to get familiar and acclimated with everything uh, yeah. because um, I, you know, we get used to copying and pasting so much, and then when you really don't have something to copy from then it's like oh shoot like yeah, we're, for memory. me it's like shoot yeah so um i found that it's for me it's better to retain knowledge um this way so um i mentioned in the beginning this is a short script and this is literally like the script so this is good to go we'll save it we'll head back over in community let that compile and then we're going to uh add that script to these buttons so this way when we click the buttons things will flip back and forth now, just to prove that we're actually doing something, if I click play here, and if I click this ingredients button, nothing's gonna happen. You see that? I can click it and nothing happens. And that's because we need to add that script. Um, also, I was already, yeah, I was on the, on the uh, instructions page. So technically, it should have took me two ingredients. What I'm going to do is turn back on the one that needs to be ingredients. I just need to name that properly. I'm gonna turn off instructions. And then down here where I have this button collection, that's where I'm going to add the, um, that script we just created. So this one is called manage recipe pages. Nope, it has switched before it. There we go. So now that's been added. And then right below that, these are those two public game objects that I mentioned. One was the ingredients page. The other one is the instructions page. Right. And so, hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I said. Oh. Yeah, I said it. In, I rip, I answer you, but in in French. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to drag that ingredients here. That ingredients object from earlier that's holding all that information for the ingredients. And then the instructions, we're going to drag that here to the instructions page. And then the next thing we need to do now is make these top two buttons do something. So the first, the first pressable button, I like to rename these so that we know what the heck we're even talking about. And let me, let me just want to say instructions. There we go. So starting with ingredients, um, because I'm using what are known as prefabs in Unity, and these are going to be objects that already come pre-configured. With MRTK, we have a lot of prefabs, and these buttons are prefabs. With that said, they have a lot that's already attached to it already, which is great, so you don't have to do that from scratch. Now, what I need to do is add an event for when that button is pressed. What you'll notice is that we currently already have some actions that happen when the buttons are pressed. One, we have um, an indication that something should be triggered. The second we have here that um, that's on the hand press. The other we have here is a sound that plays. So what we need to add now is when I press this button, change to this other panel. So I'll click one to add to list. I'm going to drag in this button collection here because that's where I have the script sitting on that component or that object. And then here in function, we're going to go to Twitch Manage Recipe Pages and we're going to find that method that we created for switching to the ingredients page. So that one's going to be called Open Ingredients. And guess what, Frank? That's it for that part. Very quick, doesn't take that long. Um, we'll do the same for the instructions. We're going to head here to button press drag in button collection there. We're going to do Twitch Manage Recipes um, pages. This one is open instructions. 
So now, assuming that I didn't mess up somewhere, when we click play, I should be able to click instructions and the instructions one should pop up. And when I click um, on ingredients, ingredients should pop up. So by default, I have ingredients as the first thing that shows. And let's make this a little bit bigger for the folks at home. And let's bring it on over. All right, so moment of truth. Let me bring my hand up. And if I click instructions, it works. Our script is perfect. And if I click ingredients, let me click that one. Yep, it switches. So that was the first script that we created. We made um, two methods that, um, yes, definitely a lot of claps. <laughs> we made two methods that can switch between these two different scenes. So uh, there's another thing that you can do as well if you wanna add that voice functionality to it because I like using voice in things that I make because realistically, we can't always use um, our hands to navigate between different scenes. Now, it's not the best thing to do in every experience that you create, but if you do have the ability to do it and it makes sense, I would highly suggest adding it. Um, now, as I mentioned during the demo that if you are, um, we're using the Universal Windows platform, there is some voice functionality that's already built into there that we're gonna make use of before we add that Azure component to do stuff in Spanish. So for this part, um, this part doesn't require coding, which is great, but you could do it with code if you want it. So you wanna head to that Mixed Reality Toolkit object and then here in the configuration profile, we have input. And the input here has um, a speech area. This speech area has a list of keywords and you can add keywords to here and assign these keywords to the objects using what's known as a speech input handler. So that way, if someone were to say that word, then whatever action would um, you assign to it would happen. Now, because I'm using um, a Unity layout that I use for the actual example, I don't need to add these all over again. But as you can see, I have um, keywords for instructions and ingredients, so on and so forth. So that's just to show you where that lives. Um, one thing I do wanna do is move over this cookies thing because it's so weird that they are sitting right there. Let's see. Ah. Forget it. No, nope, I'm gonna do it. That was bothering me that, uh, where is it? I just wanna give you a heads up. Since we spent a bit of time uh, struggling at the beginning with the uh, HoloLens, we are one hour in right now. Gotcha, so the last part, I can definitely get out in 30 minutes. Let's, where's my, oh, there it is. I just want to move that over to where this is. And there you go. <laughs> and Charity Dev said, was, I'm okay if you want to bust the, the schedule. <laughs> I'm going to try to stay as, as close as I can. Um, all right. So what, I, what was I saying? We're adding the speech to the two buttons. And so for ingredients, if we open up that button again, what we need to do is add what's called a speech input handler script. And that's going to give you that voice functionality that we're looking for. So we're going to add a component, it's literally called speech input handler. And then let me collapse all these so that way it's in a better view. And in here, you can set it so that way focus is required because if you think about it, uh, if you enable the ability to just say commands with voice in your experiences, it might be the case that you just your user accidentally says the word and now they triggered something. So what you can do instead is say that focus is required. What's going to happen is that the device will check that they're actually looking at whatever that button is, for example. And then if you were to say it, then it will take whatever action. Um, because I didn't, for me in building this, I didn't mind not having that focus. Um, I just unchecked if focus required, but that's just as a heads up if you're building something that has voice. Cool. We want to add the keyword. This one's going to be ingredients, which we've created already. And so that's why it populates it. And then here in the response, we're going to add an event and we're going to um, assign that button collection there. Similar to how we just added the functionality for pressing the buttons, we're going to come to that uh, that same script for Twitch Manage Recipe pages, and this one's going to say open ingredients. 
And then we'll do the same thing for the instructions. We're going to add that speech input handler script. And then I'm going to collapse this again so you all can have a better view. We're going to make focus not required. And we're going to add the keyword. This one is called instructions. And then we'll add the event. We'll put that button collection here. Same as before, this one's going to be open instructions. All right, so now what's to happen is I'm gonna use voice when I go into play mode to switch between the two different panels versus me actually touching it. So let's confirm that works. Instructions, ingredients. All right, voice works. Yay. So that's good. Um, so far, we're only one script in and we're about to add the next one, which is going to be your ability to be able to do this with another language. Now, I haven't done the research into it and I'm not 100% sure, but I haven't found a way to do it. So that's why I did it this way. Um, I know that when we do the keywords, as we just did in Unity, they're in English. If there's a way to do them in another language, I'm not 100% sure. But fortunately with Azure, we can add that ability on our own. So that way we can instead use our language of choice. And it's going to take very similar steps, but it will take more coding. Fortunately, we have a script available for you that you can use. So that way you don't 100% have to guess and start from scratch. Um, Frank, if you can share the, let me get the name of it before I tell you. It should be the Unity Speech to Text, which is the AKA.ms Unity Speech yep. to Text. Perfect. So, I was ready. I knew yep. it was coming. <laughs> Perfect. So, that will take you to um, what you should see on my screen, which is a quick start to recognize speech from a microphone. And I personally would suggest switching to C Sharp and then down below in choose your target environment, going to Unity. And this will actually give you a script right here that you can use. Just wanna copy that, paste that over into Unity, and then we need to do some manipulating in here to get it configured for what we need to use it for. Now, in addition to this, you will also need an Azure account. So you'll sign up for that. You'll get your credits if you're brand new to using Azure. But what needs to be created is going to be um, a, uh, a cognitive service resource, I believe it's for speech, but more information regarding the service in itself, um, it's on our Azure page. This is the one link that I just never gave you, Frank, and I don't know why. But for those at home, I will say, if you do a search for Microsoft um, Azure Cognitive Services, and you'll go to the speech services, that's where you'll find the speech to text, and that's what we're using. You can even try it out here in the browser as well. Um, you can choose your language of choice and try that out. There are a lot, as you can see. So even though I'm just using Spanish, that's because I only know three languages or four languages and Spanish is one of the easier ones. So that's why I'm using Spanish. But um, you, you can really choose whatever is um, available. But the way that speech to text is working is when the user presses that microphone button, the service is looking for an utterance from that user. So that utterance, let's say it's ingredients. That will then be sent to Azure, who will then do a transcription from speech to text, and you're going to get back a string. And that string is what I'm using to validate whether that string equals whatever, if it equals the same exact string that I create in the code. So that's how we're using the service. I'm going to show you how that works in real life. So heading back over into Unity, let's create a new script and we're going to call this one switch speech and then we're going to head back into visual studio i'm going to grab that script that i showed you just a moment ago and i'm going to copy and paste it into here and i let's see i'm gonna do it step by step actually because some of it we don't need to bring over so let's open up visual studio and here we are so first things first, we need to make sure that we can actually use the customer services speech SDK. And so here we can do using Microsoft.CognitiveServices.Speech. And that doesn't look right because none of it looks like it's registered. Microsoft Cognitive, huh, cognitive services 
peach. And then we also need hmm, Unity Scene Management. That's what's going to be able to enable us to uh, switch to that recipe book page that doesn't exist right now. Okay, so we have the right usings in here. And then we need some uh, some public game objects here as well. I'm going to create these for us. One's going to be a pressable button. And this one is going to be the button that we use to activate the microphone. The next one, ah, I'm in the start method. Let me get out of there. Okay, there we go. Okay, the next one that we're going to create is the, something's not right. It's not, one second. Where's my IntelliSense? Let's see, let's exit that. Let's open it back up, because this, as much as I like typing everything out from scratch, that's like really making me type everything out from scratch. The dot, dot, okay. dot is always interesting, right? Dot, and then you scroll uh, and... Let's try that again. And if it's still doing that, it's okay because we can do the copy and paste method. Well, sometimes it takes a little bit of uh, time when the, the lib, like you're using maybe, has been... I wonder, oh, it didn't even pick up. I don't even have, let's see, using Microsoft. There we go, it's working now. Okay, now I should get pressable buttons, squiggly lines should go away. Perfect, okay, now we're back in business. So the next object we wanna add is for the ingredient page and Let's call it ingredient page. We do one for, that should not be a pressable button. That should be a game object because it's not a button. There we go. And this one, and I spelled ingredient wrong. Sheesh. I'm making up words over here. And I still didn't spell it right. Ingredient. <laughs> Ingree. Now I can't spell. Ingree. D and wow, I was completely off. Okay, <laughs> would you believe? Would you believe that I'm like a spelling bee champ? Like I literally am, and sometimes I just can't spell words. I was reading it and like I couldn't see what's wrong, and I was like, I know it's not <laughs> like that, but like what? Uh, okay. Right. <laughs> Like, I know it's not like that, but... <laughs> well, you know, it's one of those things where, like, you try to not think about the pink elephant. And, of course, you know, uh -huh. that's the only thing that stay in your mind. So, yeah. I was yep. like, yeah, no, it's wrong. But how do you spell ingredient? Yeah. And it's the same in it's French, happened. right? So, like, it's except uh, there's yeah. an accent. But, like... Yeah. Anyway. You got it now. Um, what I did, I also added an object for the instructions page. I added a string for the scene name, and we're not going to implement that, so you know what? I can probably get rid of it. That would be if we were switching back to that recipe book page that I didn't create. But I did add a text message. I thought, um, I thought it was for Star Wars teams. Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then what we have next is the text mesh. Um, we're using that one for the output. I use that from a from a in use debugging perspective, if you will, um, just so I can make sure that what I said in Spanish is what it should be. And it helps me keep track of where I said things wrong. In a real world app, you wouldn't need that, but it's just for me to make sure that I'm pronouncing things correctly, especially when you even, realize even it's not more working. when you're streaming about it. <laughs> yeah, you know more when you're streaming about it, right? So Everything um, is recorded. Yeah. So the next thing I'm going to add is going to be references to, um, oh, I guess a reference, I'm only doing one of these, a reference to the Twitch managed recipe script so that way we don't have to recreate that method, those two methods that we have in here. So I'm gonna call this, here we go, and we're gonna call this Twitch managed recipe. And okay, so that's good. The last things I am not gonna type out 
um, I'm going to actually now bring in that script that we had over in um, in on Docs, mm -hmm. and I'm going to just walk you through what's happening in there before we get to the good stuff and the update message. So I am going to do paste. Oops, that's control B. Oh, did I just start something? I still don't know all my shortcuts in here, so I end up. I always like end up doing things that I shouldn't do in Visual Studio. <laughs> I always mess up somehow. All right, so this here is where we've added the um, that script that was back over on Docs, and so here we have some more um, variables that we create. What's going to be important here is we have this boolean, this boolean, this boolean to see if we're waiting for the recording. And then we also have um, a string that gives us that message that comes back from Azure, which then gets reassigned to this output text um, component that we created earlier. Now, as we head down, we're also checking if the mic permission has been granted. In the demo earlier, you probably heard me mention a million times that I don't think I granted permission to use my mic. That's, uh, that's where this comes into play because typically, well, not typically, but all the time, if you haven't granted permission to use your mic, then you can't use your mic in the app. It's also a really good thing to do if you're building experiences is to build in that request to uh, ask for permission. Same with the eye tracking. We didn't set it up um, today because I'm using a profile that already had it set up. But if you're using eye tracking in any of your experiences, get permission from the user. Um, that's going to be really important. Otherwise, you can't use it. So uh, the script that I'm using also is capable of doing anything with the Android platform or iOS. So throughout here, you might see some references to Android and iOS. And that's just what uh, comes with the script that we have over on Docs. Here in this awake method, we um, need to grab that uh, that script that I referenced earlier, so that way we can use those methods instead of having to create it. So that's going to be that Twitch manage recipe page. And let me, what did I even call it? I did it Twitch manage recipe. Equal to thing. Needs to be thing all set. Yeah. Find object of type. And I will say for me personally, whenever I'm doing anything with Unity with scripting and I don't know how to do it, I always head to YouTube because someone somewhere has recorded a video on how to do something. So like I didn't know how to reference other scripts for the longest. And like I felt like I felt like it was a possible thing. I just didn't know how to do it. And fortunately there are videos on how to do that and reference variables and other ones. So um, I would always suggest YouTube if you're getting started with scripting in Unity. Unity also has a really good um, scripting tutorial that they also have um, coupled up with this. But when it comes to scripting in general, um, if you want to try out something that we have at Microsoft, I actually checked out, I don't have a link to it, but it's over in Channel 9. And if you happen to head over to the C Sharp docs, um, Scott Hanselman and Kendra did a video series of an intro to C Sharp. Highly suggest checking that out because literally that's how I learned C Sharp. So um, scripting's not your thing and it was not my thing when I started. There are a lot of resources out there for you to check out. So we just referenced that one uh, Twitch Manage Recipe pages one. So now we can pull in the methods from that. And then down here, we have a button click. This is where we're setting up the uh, speech configuration. Um, before we go to press play, on try this out. I'm going to put in my uh, my key from Azure as well as my region. My region is West US 2, so I can fill that in right now. Um, and then down here is what's also going to be really important. This is where I'm actually selecting Spanish as the language. Now, there are, uh, are a lot of other languages that you could choose from. Once you do find out one, I know we have a chart floating around somewhere on Docs that has a list of all the um, correct uh, syntax, if you will, to use. For the languages, I'm using Spanish, so it's going to be lowercase es and then capital capital um, or uppercase es. I know for French, it was like lowercase fr, capital fr, German, lowercase ce, capital ge, so on and so forth. So that's what we're setting in here. Mine right now is set to Spanish. I have seen ways um, of being able to switch languages all within one script. Um, I haven't gotten there yet, so for now, we're just going to do this one language, which is Spanish. But the reason why I did Spanish over French, um, and Frank, maybe you might know, can I include special characters in my script? 
Like, could I put an accent over something? In a stream? Yeah. Yeah? I can. Okay. I've never done it. So I have to try that out. Because that's why I did Spanish over French. Because when I was doing a lot of translations in French, I was like, oh, there's too many, too many, too many symbols in here. So I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, you can do that. Uh, no problem. Um, okay. And then the two characters, you know, the first character are the, uh, the, the country. And then the second one are the language. That's super helpful. Thanks for that. Because, um, like in French, you have multiple French. You could have FRFR or CAFR or like BEFR or like there's multiple versions of the French. Gotcha, gotcha. I wish I had that link because I would share it, but I happened to have like stumbled upon it one day just where it like lays it all out. Um, okay, so we did that config. And then down here is where Azure starts to work its magic. We have some if, else if, else if statements happening here to check whether speech was recognized. We have some messages that instead are passed over to the user if nothing's recognized. And then down below, we have um, that message variable that I said we created earlier. That's going to be assigned to whatever stream comes back from Azure. And then here we have, is it waiting for a recording, then it's false. That just changes that Boolean to false. Now here in the start method, um, we have some more um, conditional statements as well. And so these check to make sure that you actually have objects assigned to these particular um, elements in Unity. Otherwise, if you don't have a mic, then you can't use it. So you might as well catch that before uh, the user even proceeds. And as we continue to go down past the Android and platform iOS, we have that we're checking that the mic permission granted is true. And then the message itself, I changed it to say, say something in Spanish. Um, again, I'm using that, that view of what the language is in the app for my own sake, just to check my own pronunciation. But in theory, you wouldn't have anything on screen saying like, speak Spanish. The user would press the mic and be able to speak Spanish. So what's going to be great and what we're doing down here is in this update method, now, there's probably a much more efficient way of doing this and with regards to how we code this, but because I am, uh, I try my best with making sure that I have nice clean code, we're going to do it the April way today. And you can always clean it up later. So starting down here, I just copied over the rest of what was in that uh, script from docs that has that update method. And here we have that output message. Now, just below that, I am using if statements. Is it missing one somewhere? Something's not right. I'm missing one. Uh, right. Maybe for the namespace or something like that? I was missing a, a closing bracket yep. when I copied it over. I forgot one. Alrighty, so we have that, and then this is where I put my long list of if statements. We only have me to use two of them right now. So the first one that I did for my conditional statement is if message is equal to instrucciones, which is instructions in Spanish, then what we want to have happen is we're going to use that method we created to open the instructions page. So the first thing we're going to do is reference that script. So I believe I called that switch manage recipe in here. And then we're going to get that script, which is called open ingredients. And then that's it. So we can do that again for um, ingredients. This is where my code starts to get probably not the best way to code. So uh, definitely do better than me. <laughs> but this one will be ingredient days. And we're going to say this one should manage recipe close open instruction uh, open oh I did them backwards my bad everyone this one should say open instructions nobody saw say anything so <laughs> you know. alrighty so this is the most simpler version of what I did um, I had more. Um, more conditional statements in here. But in any case, this is really like the last part of the coding. So what we need to do now is I need to pull this screen off and save it so I can plop in my uh, my Azure key. 
and then we're going to try this out in unity and hope that everything works so let's give this a try and let it compile all right so oh i don't think i click save there we go and we're going to put that Grip on that button collection that we have here, that long vertical bar. And so here where it has, is that where I put it? I don't know, put it here. And we'll put it here. And we're gonna pull it up, it's called Switch Speech. And then we have some things that we need to assign to it. Because if you remember, we created those um, public game objects that we need to assign to. First of all, we need a button because right now I don't have a button in here. And let me just grab a button really quick. This is the last thing that we need to do to set this up. Let me slide this over because I want to get a circular one because I'm being picky. There we go. Close out of that. All right, so let's bring that over bring that up there i can't see it because it's not in my view okay and now we can bring you back over so we just added the button let me zoom in on that so you can see that it exists there it is and the other thing we need is just that text so that way we can see that uh what the output is so i'm just going to take one from somewhere else, drag it on down and move it on over. This will give me whatever I say in Spanish. And I'm going to say Spanish phrase or I'm going to call it All right. And then I now need to come back to that script so we can assign the output text is going to be that text object we just created. The instructions page is going to be that instructions page that we have that's initially set not to active. Ingredients page is going to be ingredients page. And then that start reco button will be that circular button that we just added. So we have all that added in now. Frank, are you ready for the moment of truth? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. I'm going to speak some Spanish and let's hope that it works. The first thing I'll try out is instructions and we'll see if it switches. So. Here goes nothing. All right. Instructiones. Nope, I said it wrong. Instructiones. Nope, I said it wrong. Instructiones. Yay! It changed. Let's try ingredients. Ingredientes. Yep, it worked. So what we did was we made use of what was already built in using um, speech that comes with uh, if you're doing work with Windows uh, with the Universal Windows platform. And then we also added in some Azure to it so that way we can choose whatever language we want to use and uh, use our voice commands in that way as well. So if you uh, are interested in giving this a try, like I mentioned, I'm working on creating the repos tomorrow for the projects that I've shared so far. So you can take these, open them up in Unity, play around with them, make them your own, go make fun, fabulous <laughs> language stuff because that'll make me happy. But overall, that is how I recreate it, or just how I created this recipe book app that I shared with you today. It How's was, that, Frank? <laughs> oh, it was it was awesome. Like, I think you know, like when I'm cooking, I always like if you are having a book, then it's hard to keep the page. If you're having your iPad or something like that, and like you don't want to mess up, so having those things, mm -hmm. like you could cook without messing around. And and I was just you know when you said like oh I think it's a good idea to have voice come in. I just see myself putting pancake mix everywhere because I'm trying yeah. to find in the menu. Yeah, definitely. So. And I and I will say because I can't take all the credit for the idea. Um, one of my teammates, uh, M, 
she had the idea for a recipe book and I was saying, I need a project idea. And she mentioned it and I was like, oh, I can build that. And so thanks to her, like that's where the idea came from because to your point, she said the same thing. When you're cooking, your hands aren't always free, you know? So and La Laser Walker, she's in the chat. Yeah. Oh, she's there? Oh, hi, Em! <laughs> so yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a really, really helpful way to do things. And that's also why I like adding voice because sometimes it's, it's, um, it's, it's, a, it's a better experience for some of the things that I like to personally do to have voice. But also, it helps me practice my language learning because you really learn that you're not pronouncing words correctly. <laughs> Did I do the typo? Oh, oh yeah. I don't have my uh, shout out uh, automation here. It's not my channel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I need to bring my, uh, my bot. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How's that coming along? It's pretty cool. We did a bunch of stuff uh, on last stream. Uh, pretty happy about it. Like uh, JavaScript is uh, coming his way. So eventually I will add more. Uh, uh -huh. Of course, I will bring some Azure in it. That's for sure. You know me. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, yes. Fingers crossed I might have a bot for you next week. So we'll, we'll see. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. <laughs> it's like, can she code it? <laughs> Is it next week already? You come. You're coming back. Next, yeah, next week. That'll That's be my awesome. final week with you until I have more ideas. So yeah. That's awesome. So you know. Yeah. And now that uh, you break the heist, maybe uh, M will will come and show yeah. us all sorts of different things. Yeah, definitely. M has like a crazy, in a good way, um, like really extensive, deep background in, in working with gaming. And so I would love to see her on here sharing some of what she's doing as well. Because oh, she's, yeah. she's built some pretty interesting things as well, I would say. So, yeah. So Okay. So, well, it was super fun having you. I'm pretty happy. Any questions uh, before chat, before we go? We still have a few minutes where we can uh, take some questions if you have. Yeah, I'm okay. checking it out. Or at least now I am. <laughs> I didn't get to look at it much during the stream. Um, do the translated text come back with full stop at the end? Yes, it does. And so as I was coding, I'm not sure if you happen to have caught that, but I did add um, periods at the end. It also listens for intonation. So uh, if you happen to end your sentence in a way that you would if you were to ask a question, you know how your voice kind of inflects and goes up, um, it will also give you those question marks. Um, I discovered that by accident earlier. So, <laughs> so do you it does need to make that. the motion with the uh, the shoulder too? You got to do the up? motion too. <laughs> yep, you got to do the motion too. Okay. But yeah, it will it will give you <laughs> it will give you punctuation. Um, also, it will take away any filler words like ums and likes um, and uh, well, I guess ums and uhs. It will take away those words when it does give you back the transcription so do keep that in mind excellent yeah uh, well thank you a lot it was a pleasure again to have you looking forward to see you again yeah. next week yes yes you definitely. are the goddess of Olens. it was awesome <laughs> i think i will rename you i love the title i love the title <laughs> yeah let's make it a thing like i should make a t-shirt and ship it to you yeah Oh, yeah. Oh, that's I, I would probably, wear. I would probably um, wear. <laughs> Yeah, so big thanks. Big thanks to all of you in the chat spending uh, your time with us today. It was really cool. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, so if you want to know more, follow her, Vogue and Code, on Twitter. Uh, and she's uh, been posting all the time very interesting uh, pictures and stuff. I am there, um, definitely. I do appreciate all the, the my friends that made it to the stream. The moment I could look over, I saw your names. So thank you for thank you for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. Have a bye. Uh, have a good day, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.